I know. Hi. 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 Yay, we're here. Chicken's here. Carl's here. Lisa's here. Yay, <laughs> Carl. So happy to have you. I'm happy to be here. Yay, I'm going to play the music in because we're we so go. professional. <laughs> It's a polka, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it is a polka. <laughs> Hi, Carl. Hello. Hi. We're super I'm excited to have you here. Oh, it's a great dinner. <laughs> yeah, awesome. dinner. Yeah. Very this is your actual dinner for tonight, right? You're no, we're going to throw it out and have mac and cheese. <laughs> uh, let's just have a little box mac and cheese, you know. No, I can't do anybody. I will tell you that um, since we've been on keto uh, during Corona, um, I've experimented with other versions of mac and cheese, including cauliflower mac and cheese, which is delicious. Yes, I've made that on the show before. It is really good. Very good. Especially if you put a little bacon in there. It's yeah. <laughs> yeah, bacon. You can put buffalo sauce in it. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> so why did you go keto during Corona? What, what, what about Corona made you do that? Well, when you're large, um, what better chance for a reveal when this is all over? Without <laughs> <laughs> having to see anybody. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I know you can do some self makeovers at home. I'm not gonna, you know, I don't have to be the biggest loser right now. Um, when we've got one in the White House, um, and by oh. the Corona's <laughs> over, he will be long gone, hopefully, and some yes. of my extra Carl will be long gone. <laughs> oh. Well, we both worked on the Biggest Loser. <laughs> We did this last season. So, so yes, I was the cue card girl. Yeah. <laughs> did it just say run? Run. What, what's that? Run. Run. Yeah. Go, go. No, I held them for Bob. <laughs> just Bob. Yeah. Did you um did you feel like keto was working for you? Do you like it? How what's been yeah, your tell everybody what I've lost, but I've lost a good amount of weight. So so it's when working. I found it, we'll announce, yeah, keto works if yeah. you stick to it. I mean, a lot of people say it doesn't work for me. I did X, Y, and Z. And it's like, well, that's not that, you know, to say it doesn't work. You know, I'm sure it doesn't work for everybody, actually. Um, but yeah. for, you know, I will say, and I'm sure you will back me up, that dieting and losing weight is a lot easier for men uh, yes. physiologically. Yeah. So yeah. Men have much more immediate success dieting if they stick to it. Um, the pounds come off easier um, yep. for larger people, especially if they're men. Um, and so I've heard from some of my women friends that keto eventually starts working for them, but they don't necessarily get that first initial burst. Like, I think I lost mm -hmm. a significant amount that first week that would seem unhealthy. <laughs> um, wow. Yeah. So. Well, good. Well, Sandy Richards is saying hi to us. Hi, Sandy. <laughs> With my diet ginger ale. There you go. <laughs> so Carl, we're going to have people that are chatting with us at the same time, and they might have questions. So, All right. We'll, we'll throw them at you. <laughs> well, um, do you want to start with a question, or should I just get started? Let's well, get started. Yeah, what are you making? All right. I'm going to turn the camera. <laughs> Look at him go, camera guy. Look at He's got it down. He's better All right. than so we are making salad with fresh dressing, which is going to be a lemon vinaigrette. We're making Yum. roasted Brussels sprouts, which you can see here. And then in the sous vide started a while ago, I've got two steaks, um, two ribeyes with white truffle butter. Um, cooking. Oh, man. Can we come over to your house for dinner? Um, <laughs> when it's safe. Uh, no. <laughs> the types Someday. Of Someday. Up, they kind of pop pick up when you're home all the time. Um, <laughs> all right, so we're going to get started with the dressing. Um, okay. You, you always want to use good uh, olive oil if you're using olive oil. Don't skip yes. it. Yes. Hello, we say that every day. <laughs> um, 
you can taste the difference. If you wouldn't eat it alone, you shouldn't put it in the food. It's not like booze, right? Booze, you have a lot more latitude about what you can use booze for, right? There's certain booze you wouldn't mix yeah. with anything. Um, so olive oil, you want to have good stuff. So we're yeah. going to start with uh, half a cup of olive oil. Extra virgin. Okay. Oil. Extra virgin. Hollywood. Yes. <laughs> Hollywood approve. <laughs> and then we're going to have some fresh squeezed orange juice. And just for the sake of uh, the conversation, everything that I'm doing is organic here, unless it's not, and I'm not going to tell you. Wow! Yay! We're, we're all in. You. We're applauding you right now. So I uh oh, I don't the, see a lemon squeezy. <laughs> I cut off the end of the lemon because it makes it easier to use the lemon press, and if you roll it around, um, it releases a lot of the juice inside before you even go for it. Then you cut yep. it. Yep. Debriana, I'm feeling so validated. I'm so validated by everything Carl says and does because we believe all these things. We're so in sync, Carl, like politically and food wise. <laughs> Look at the I, squeezy. I went to some patron saints of, of the culinary world. Mostly, um, Ina Garten, who's my favorite. Yes. Yes. Um, and America's Test Kitchen, which is my. Oh, know, I love America's Test Kitchen. Love it. We love it. Herman and me, very Einstein, Einstein, you know. Yeah. Science, we're all secret scientists in the kitchen. <laughs> all right, so then you want a, um, a quarter cup of fresh lemon juice. Mm. Wow, Walt lost a lot of weight on keto. I see you saying that. On a, the people have lost weight on keto. They're all check, They're all chiming in. Now, you may have noticed my first mistake. My first mistake was not zesting the lemon before I smushed it. So we're going oh, to- Oh, I didn't know you were gonna zest it or I would have asked you. Get it off. <laughs> so we're just gonna get a little lemon zest. You need a microplane in your kitchen. Yes. For cheese. Well, we always okay. need a microplane. Con confirmations at every turn. <laughs> Peggy is beside herself. She just saw, she's saying, yay, squeezy. <laughs> All right. Now we want to do a teaspoon of Dijon mustard. Oh, yay. Grape upon is always fine. <laughs> Who was it? Who was the politician that we were complaining about Dijon? Oh, it was Barack Obama in his first year. Where everyone was saying something about the Grape Poupon. Remember that? Yeah. <laughs> it's hard to remember all of the scandals of the Obama administration. There was I know. <laughs> <laughs> the tan suit. The tan suit just did me in. <laughs> and now I'm going to do uh, two minutes uh, cloves of garlic. So Remember Michelle's arms and the scandal with that? Oh, yes. Oh. That was terrible. All right. <laughs> so. He's doing garlic. Yum. We need garlic in any, almost any salad dressing. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And so are I, you, most recipes you, underestimate how much garlic you should put in in a dish because of American taste buds. So um, I only put like one extra clove than what they recommend. <laughs> That's uh, a man after my own Italian heart. <laughs> yeah, definitely. You want to you want to give it a good whack with the knife, the side of the knife. Yes, the, That's the Italian way. Whack it. <laughs> um, there are Just, other methods. I mean, this is like one of those. Um, fixes that everybody says they have, you know, online, you know, whether it's shaking it in a jar or whatever. This is the <laughs> standard way it works every time. This Carl, the Italian yeah. way. Whack it. Carl, <laughs> what kind of knives do you use? Do you have a favorite? Um, these are um, Wusthof. Nice. Oh, nice. Um, here's the trick about buying nice knives. Um, don't buy them full price ever. Um, you want to find new sets for cheap on eBay. Oh, hey, tip of the day. People get them for their weddings, and then they will sell them online if they get an extra set or if they get something that actually was a different version than what they wanted. Oh, wow, okay. Um, hey. I got a $1,500 set of knives for way, like, less than a third of the cost. Oh, wow. My God. Tip of the day. <laughs> I didn't know we were going to get these kind of tips today. This is awesome. You didn't know that um, my dream had always been to host a cooking show. So, uh, oh, oh, 
Before COVID, we have a local political uh, show here, and I was talking to the producer long before COVID. I said, you know, I'd love to have a show where I just cook with a different elected official in the area, and we do like <laughs> every, you know, record a bunch of them in one pass. Um, that's a very big flow, so we're just going to do one. You know, Carl, oh, Carl, I'm a TV producer. That's a really great idea. <laughs> it is. It You know, be, there, because the truth is, we always say hashtag food is love, and most people can all get along over a meal, at least come together about something while they're eating. Yeah, yeah. Brianna, it might be the last thing on planet Earth people can come together on. Be the only thing, you know, you don't want to necessarily talk politics or whatever. So, um, you know, if you're an elected official in a local area, you're always talking about the same stuff over and over and over again, right? So now yeah. we're a little bit of salt with like half a teaspoon of kosher salt. Kosher is different than table salt. I think everybody should know that. Um, yeah. Then, like eyeball about a quarter of a teaspoon of fresh cracked pepper. You should he never- He eyeballs it. He eyeballs it, people. You should never <laughs> buy- He's not measuring. <laughs> you should never buy pepper that's already been ground. It's almost pointless. Unless you're doing Correct. a mini prank where you're trying to get somebody to sneeze. I agree. <laughs> All right, and now we whisk. Okay. Well, um, Lisa's sister Holly is on our show every Tuesday, and she has um, a company called Holly's Homegrown, and she talks every week about fresh herbs, and she makes her own salts and olive oils, flavored olive oils and vinegars. So you may, you should check it out. There it is. Oh, that is gorgeous. Oh, that looks like textbook, textbook vinaigrette. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm critical, but the um, the garlic could have been a little bit finer, mince, but nobody's paying attention, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not like you're having guests. Right. Evan matters. Evan matters. Evan matters. I'm going to do that. Hashtag Evan matters. <laughs> All right. Now we're going to prepare the Brussels sprouts. Mm. First tip of Brussels sprouts, make sure they're roughly the same size. When you buy them, you could see a bag that looks good, but it might have like 10 of them that are giant and then the rest of them are golf ball size. Try to go for the golf ball size ones because they taste better. They're not as bitter. That's right. Excellent tip. Yet again. So you, we want, are to all end, tips. you want to cut off the end, the root end, mm -hmm. you want to slice them in half. And when you do cut off the end, and slice them in half, you usually lose the outside layer of leaves, which is perfectly fine. Well, for our, for me, they go right into the compost bin. Yeah. So they're never wasted. Or I put them in my freezer, in the freezer soup bag. <laughs> yes, she also, Depending on the quality, if they're all mangled or whatever, or if you if they look like they've seen better days, you can also just put them on the, on the tray with the Brussels sprouts, and you end up getting these really tasty like Brussels sprouts. Yeah, crispy yeah, bits. I, I just eat them. I just put them in there. Yeah. Crispy bits. We like the crispy bits. Um, it's all about texture. Um, yep. So, um, Brussels sprouts, it's a proper noun. <laughs> are, you, are you proud of me that I spelled it correctly on your post? <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> thankfully, the computer always corrects me. I, you know, it reminds you where it's from, right? So. Right. My mother made Brussels sprouts frequently when I was growing up. And I don't know if it was a thing that nobody thought about roasting them until after the 70s, 80s, 90s, and early 2000s had happened. Um, yeah. My memory is that they were always steamed and covered in cheese. And oh. I'm, not, I'm not a cheese person. I do will eat it on things. But I, my philosophy is if you have to cover it in cheese, you're cooking it wrong. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the feature of the dish is the cheese. Right. right. Yes. Yeah, right. Money on Brussels sprouts if the feature is the cheese. I had was a, it American cheese? I don't remember. I had a babysitter who boiled them only, put them on salt, and I grew up hating them. And then, oh, really? and then you know, like you said, later on, I started roasting. roasting. This whole world of Brussels sprouts opened up. Well, that's the thing is, my mom. My mom my mom was a great cook. My mom was a great cook, but one thing I knew more, I didn't know more. I didn't know more. 
here it's steamed. I love them. I love them steamed. I love them steamed with butter and pepper and salt. Steaming <laughs> is such a different thing. It's such a different yeah. Oh, Sandy no, says hers were steamed. No, I like them that way. You just don't want to over. You don't want to over. No, you don't need more than that. You don't need more than that to steam broccoli or any broccoli yeah. or. In fact. Now, did you learn to cook from your mom? Um, I mean, I learned certain dishes. I didn't start doing this regularly until I. I didn't have. There's a different. Like you know. Sorry, I don't want to hear myself talk. I don't want to hear myself talk. Um. Mm -hmm. Um. The, the uh, every time I say, uh, I hear myself, I, hear myself, I, hear myself. I forgot what I was saying. I what I was saying. That's uh, how did you learn to cook? So like confidence cooking. Like I would cook things I would, like until I knew that you were going to cook that, like, that, <laughs> that was disgusting and hard. You cook things that were expensive because I was afraid of wasting the money. Um, but. I learned a, a fail way of doing chicken and just regular chicken breast and and a lot of confidence. You know, it's easy yeah. to know something that you cooked before and many, many times. I've done these many times, so it's not like it's like, so it's not like it's, I mean, the kitchen was pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, our um, I think that that's part of um why we do this too is to try and give people confidence to cook, and just go ahead and just jump in there, and we call it a judgment-free zone. It's also <laughs> the same thing with COVID. It's so much cheaper. Just eating out. Yes. <laughs> it's a time to try things. When it's All right. So All now, kinds all right. of things. How's yeah. learning Mandarin? How Sparks is learning Mandarin. <laughs> I mean, first off, I mean, you already knew quite a bit of it. He's, uh, he's going to woodshed himself and come out with many more talents than many of us have ever tried to do. Um, it's true. <laughs> some Brussels sprouts. Um, they're, they've okay. been, uh, now, I'm going to remove the cutting board because we're done with that. Oh, you know what I forgot for the dressing? Fresh time. What? Yay! Oh, nice! Yay! We've been talking about time for the last what feels like three days. Last That's, a long three time. Time. That's a long time. All the time. Ha <laughs> ha. All right. Um, so we're gonna remove the, the first cutting board. Oh, Sandy Richards is saying she's coming over to your place for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now you can a uh, uh, rim baking sheet, and, uh, uh -huh. and uh, I put parchment paper on the parchment paper on top instead of they have the, the yeah. I have those yeah. things that you have those down, but they don't wrap yeah. the little that you want. Oh, cool! But, I don't have those, and I've often wondered about them, but I always use parchment paper. They're perfectly good. Parchment paper, parchment paper is a little bit more wasteful. But you're going to get a better color. Yeah. Color. I agree. Yeah. I agree. Um, and I, for cookies, I you can reuse the parchment paper sheet oh, yeah. a couple times. Yeah. yeah. Not with this, you won't be able to because of the olive oil, but maybe a tablespoon and a half. On a half a pound of maybe olive oil, maybe maybe is also a very exact cooking term. Yes, yes. <laughs> no more than a tablespoon on a pound. Um, and then so on uh, keto, you don't measure the oil. You can. I mean, I've, like I said, I've made this many, 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 many times. I follow the recipes almost to usually. But I also know that I'm usually so restriction on oil when right. you're on keto. You're not. It's also about the the type of oil. So like okay. you, for salad, you might use avocado oil instead of. I gotcha. Okay. Okay. So for okay. the so these, you want to do I think half a teaspoon, half a kosher salt. Okay. And a few cracks of black pepper. Mmm. You're gonna wash your hands. Wash your hands. <laughs> Hashtag wash your hands. <laughs> We've gotten really good at washing your hands. Mm -hmm. You're gonna find your towel. Find your towel. 
and then you're going to get dirty. Then you're going to get dirty. Yeah, baby. Get your hands in there. Yeah, Woo! you got to get your hands in there. And then you're going to spread it out. You're going to spread it out. If you can't create distance between three and six muscles, that's great. Because that's great. Three are the less the brown. the less the brown. Yeah. If they're too close, they steam each other. They steam each other. That's right. Which, by the way, is the same principle. Right? The same principle. If you have, <laughs> you have chicken breast in a pan, Yep. I have preheated the oven. I have preheated the oven. Okay. Oh, look at him. Turn the camera. It's good. It's good. <laughs> Yummy. Yummy. What is the oven on, Carl? 400. 400. Okay. Those were a little on the small side. For little little small side. Okay. 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 Look at that t-shirt. Yay. <laughs> it should say inside, but out for Biden. <laughs> right. <laughs> Um, Everybody's um, inside. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit of time until things are done. But one thing that you can do for salad, for salad, I have, I have salad bowls in the freezer. Ah, oh, cool. It, it just adds it, experience and adds the salad to a salad picture for me. Yeah. Um, uh, Parmesan, uh, Parmesan. Mm -hmm. and, and you want to grab a vegetable peeler, a vegetable peeler. Mm -hmm. and you're going to, rather than grating the Parmesan, and you need to get right, like, you like, yeah. like, this bowl of Parmesan cheese and instead of your potatoes, your potatoes. <laughs> There is a, the stuff that you do pre grated has a lot of fill. Mm -hmm. Gotta be careful. Gotta be careful. Yep. So, where, I wanna see the sous vide machine. All right. Three when you're right. shaving. <laughs> and I also call explain what the sous vide is to people who do not know. Okay. Um, so, a sous vide is like a water bath. And let me just put this back in the fridge. Um, what it does is it cooks over a long period of time. It brings a whatever you're cooking, in my case, almost always meat. Um, it brings the meat up to the desired temperature. So if you're used to cooking a steak in the oven, you might cook it to, you might put the oven on 425 degrees, right, for X number of minutes. Mm -hmm. Never eat something that actually is 400 degrees. Right. right. What you're trying to do, you're bombarding, right. it, you're bombarding it to bring the center of the meat right. to the safe temperature, right? Right. The safe mm -hmm. temperature. Um, what a sous vide machine does is slowly, without exposing the meat to, to too much heat, it brings the entire piece of meat up to the temperature that you want it to be at without going over it. So if you put a steak in half gotcha. and cook in the oven, sometimes you'll see a gray ring around the pink part of the steak. That's right. because you hit that exterior with so much heat to get the middle cooked to the point that you want it. Like, you, want it. you don't get that when you get a steak at the restaurant because you're cooking it in something like this usually. And so this is how it starts. Cool. I, I want a sous vide machine. <laughs> So if you buy a sous vide machine, I strongly suggest that you also buy a vacuum sealer. It's easier. You can put the meat into a bulk bag if you force the air out of it, but you really don't want the meat floating to the top because it won't get even cooked. So you start with okay. meat that's been vacuum sealed. Um, and before you vacuum seal it, you're going to sink it. So in our case, you want to include a little fat and then salt and pepper. Right. If you're cooking before, you and you can. I don't believe in ruining the steak, but you could get other spices if you wanted to. Um, but for pork chicken, you might do lemon, rosemary, a lemon slice, whatever, whatever you normally like. So for a steak, I I did uh, Florida salt, which is a uh, sea salt. You want to use more salt than your just more salt than you're cooking it. Yeah. Pepper, 
you might put like a teaspoon of um, or if you have a specialty grocery store, I think both of them sell it now. Uh, I like to put in a little bit of white truffle uh, butter, like a yeah. half a teaspoon or a full teaspoon per steak. Um, and just really makes it sing. And what's crazy is if you invest in, we were talking about this before we began, buying um, frozen meat, right? Mm -hmm. The presumption is that it's not going to taste as good as the real, you know, like the fresh thing. Well, the odds are yeah. that the steak that you're buying in the grocery store that is not frozen was at one point frozen. Mm -hmm. um, and what your goal is, is not whether it's frozen or not frozen, it's how you're going to cook it and prepare it in the best way for that meat. And so if it's frozen, a sous vide is the best way to bring it from frozen to the temperature that you want without overcooking it. A lot of people will try and broth their meat before cooking it. But the frosting, mm -hmm. right? If you put it mm -hmm. in cold water, it's probably the next closest thing, but that takes a long time to do. You have to replace the water. Yeah. Um, with a sous vide, you don't have to worry about that. You season it, you, you vacuum seal it, you put it in the, in the machine. So for a normal steak that's not frozen, it might you might take uh, an hour medium rare. Uh, oh, really? 135 to 135 on the machine. And mm -hmm. it, 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 it's a consistent temperature. It's why it's able to clean up without touching the TV. So if it's frozen, you'll just add it. It's going to be different for each cut of meat. Mm -hmm. different for each cut of meat. Mm -hmm. when you get a um, uh, Stick now, your head down so we can see you. <laughs> Where's your head? There's your head. <laughs> um. Yeah. Cook, you know, if you defrost another way, then you're left with um, all kinds of other variables, right? If you're trying to defrost while you're cooking in an oven, you're just going to end up with something that you ate in college. No, you can't do that. No. You will end up I usually up. end up, I put it in water. That's how I get it I mean, to room temperature. It's just, it takes a lot more, like with this, you can walk away from it until it's dinner time. Right? Um, yeah. If you're defrosting some chicken breasts or steaks in the yeah. uh, you have to replace the cold water every couple minutes until it's defrosted. Um, mm -hmm. uh, so right now, I've got lumps in there, uh, salt, pepper, truffle butter. They've been in there for an hour and a half. Uh, what time is it? How, how do you check the temp? How do you check it though? Can you check the temperature of the meat, or how do you know when it's done? By the time that it's been in there, you will get oh, a. Okay. I assume you get instructions on how long it takes to cook something. The news is you're never going to overcook it. So adding in okay. three minutes is not going to overcook it. Okay. Wow, that's interesting. Four hours, right? Four hours. <laughs> you know, if if the instructions say it's two hours for a steak. Never, whatever temperature, medium yeah, rare, okay. you know, well done, whatever. Because you're just, based on the how long does it to get a steak that's X to the temperature you desire? Uh -huh. If you're starting the interesting market where you want to put it until it was at 137, until it was at 137. Slowly, the water is now the water is now in the temperature of the meat up to one hundred, which take roughly two hours. Roughly two hours. You can be there soon. Be there soon. It's it's sort of like a in a in a way it feels like it's a water bath microwave. <laughs> yes, only you're not it's the whole thing. Temperature very low yeah. temperature. You can put your hand in there. It's going to be very warm. Mm. Fascinating. Now, yeah. cooking pork or chicken, it's much higher temperature. It's going to be a higher uh, temperature on the temperature on the face. Or you know, like one sixty something on chicken, right. five on, right. on pork. Yeah, and then you just brown it afterwards, right? right? So like the, the right. I just use the cast iron. You put, you, you know, you might put like a sprinkling of like and cooking oil on there, on there, mm -hmm. warm, you heat it up, or you heat it up, you heat side for like a minute, and you get some kind of that mixture. Yeah, cool. That's how they do it in a restaurant. Well, 
<laughs> so, and it's one thing to think of it. Right? A lot of people don't think of it. A lot of afraid of making it dry. Afraid of making it dry. Same principle uh, applies. Same you will not applies. cook meat. You will not if you eat it in a sous vide. Regardless of it's frozen or regardless of it's frozen. Wow. Yay. Wow. Well, we just had a big lesson and some tips on where to get knives. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you should also shop around for food. It's a couple of years old, but yes. you can find them on eBay. You can find them on eBay. There's always sales. Always sales. I would say do your research. I would say do your research. I'd people to buy whatever America's says. Buy whatever America's says. Yeah. Yep. I like them too. Mm -hmm. Cool. Well, I know. I know today. But I would love to know some love to know some handful of things that are on your list that are on your We can't not ask you. Can't not ask I didn't <laughs> I didn't think that you said. I'm getting a lot of um I just um, wanted to ask you what was on your mind. Do you have anything you wanna talk about or share about or share pertinent? I think pertinent. something about what's on your mind. Yeah. yeah, what's on your mind politically right now? Okay, sorry. Okay. I'm getting a lot. I'm getting a double. I, when I talk, I hear myself. I talk, I hear myself. Oh, no. <laughs> and when Lisa talks, I hear her, and then I hear me responding while she's talking, too. Yours is not weird for some reason, to be honest. Um, oh, weird. Yeah. So this yeah. is like our lives during, like, I, know, I, I used to feel really bad if some we were having tech issues, but... Every time I watch MSNBC for any time longer than an hour, somebody else is having a tech problem right now. Oh, yeah. It's about, I mean, I believe that the catchphrase of the year is, can you hear me? Am I on? Yeah. Can you see me? Can you hear me? <laughs> can you hear me? I mean, if I can anyone hear me? every time that I heard that on a conference call, which, by the way, I basically sit in front of a web, webcam all day long now. Um, yeah. And when I was in my 20s, people said that was going to be how it was going to be. It's not nearly as glamorous as they made it. Uh, yes. But in terms of what I'm thinking about, I'm wondering what you know, Hunter Biden's going to pick for VP. Um, uh, that it's going to happen in the next early. Yep. Uh, I'm a delegate. I'm a delegate. And, uh, and they usually announce the VP the average is 60, the average, which is still a few weeks away. So I'd be surprised. Yeah. I'm surprised who it is. I'm get to work with them, but we can work with them. So that's one thing. Yeah. I'm, I'm excited too. To I'm excited. I don't, you know what? He could pick my cat and I wouldn't care, but I am excited to find out who it is. That's, I'm just excited because I'm a political junkie and that excites me. But I, I really think that this election is is so about saving our democracy that a tomato soup can. We were talking about that tomato soup can 2020. I don't care. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. You know, I mean, you know if a tomato soup, yeah, if a tomato soup, be all for it. It would be all for it. It mm -hmm. might lose. <laughs> it might lose. Uh, um, uh, I. Uh, I, uh, whoever Biden, probably I'm a Biden president, and I would like. Yeah, I'm a Biden president, and I would like. I think he will. I think he will. Uh, yeah. Names uh, I've seen thrown around. Names most fun thrown around. I'm excited. I love Kamala Harris. I love Elizabeth Warren. I love her. There's no shortage mm -hmm. of great candidates. No shortage of great people. So she might yeah. be a good person. Yeah. Yeah. She might be a good person. Yeah. 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 So she might be a good person. Yeah. Yeah. Very exciting. <laughs> Can't wait. Can't wait. So um, are you going to be a, um, finishing the steaks now or are you going to finish them later and post them uh, afterwards? I can do either. I can do either. Um, let me just take a peek. Just take a peek. Okay. <laughs> He's peeking. <laughs> they probably need another 15 minutes. Okay. We'll be the Brussels sprouts out in like a minute now. Cool. So um, you can just post a picture of the finished. We usually post a picture of the finished dish All right. on Correct right. Kitchen so everyone can see it. I'm happy and to. then um, if you have the recipe, the vinaigrette would be great. <laughs> a minute and a half on five. Okay, perfect. I'm jealous. I want to taste it. <laughs> it looks like it's going to be so good. You're so masterful. You've done it so many times, and you know exactly what you're going to get. 
Well, yeah. I got it started. I was in a, in a school board meeting for most of the day, and then got the the CBD machine going for me. So. Well, thank you so much for hanging out with us in Corona Kitchen. My pleasure. We love thank you. you. Yeah. All right. We'd love to have you back, right. and, and we'll cook something else. Yeah. <laughs> have Maybe after the other. All right. Say hi to Evan. <laughs> Bye. Take care. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, wait. I'm going to play our play us all out now because I'm so banner on? Are you going to banner on, Debriana? Oh, yes. Here's the banner. I will show it while we're playing. This is how you can get in touch with Carl. And I will play it, play us out. While we're playing. It's like nice. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Is Laura Lenny going to pop up? <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. Thank you for watching. Go to our coffee.